so today I would like to talk about um, an Indian scholar. His name is, um, uh, I'll introduce it later, Harry Press Shastri. And I want to introduce about his theosophical movement in the modern flyers. And so first of all, I want to say that these two men, um, the one in this side is Dr. Wu Ting-Fong, and this one is the one who I want to discuss today. His name is Harry Press uh, Shastri. These two intellectuals are one of the most important Asian intellectuals in Chinese theosophical movement. Okay, so um, basically, uh, Wu Ting Pao started from in around 1910s, his theosophical movement in around 1910s, but he died a little bit early in 1922. So then, uh, after that, uh, just three do it uh, instead. So, how about um, their connection uh, or their how to compare their work? Uh, the, they, are, uh, they have a uh, first official theosophical lodge in Shanghai. The name is Stephen Lodge. And so the, the honorary president of the Stephen Lodge was um, Dr. Wu Tingfang. And what he did, he entered in the promotion in the propaganda for theosophical movement in the first stage. And besides, he you can see the other one here. He made the first translation of theosophical literature into Chinese. And then after that, uh, they have their first president should be um, Harry Press Shastri, we call it as um, H.P. Shastri. And Shastri, he moved to um, the forest. At first, he, go, he went to Japan. Then he go to China. And then what he did, um, he worked there as um, basically not just a theosophist. He worked as a Sanskrit scholar. He taught he teach in universities. And also, he was a Raja Yoga uh, instructor. And, but in his case, he's not just um, do some theosophical movement. He has some very interesting movement activities as well. I will introduce it later. So. First of all, let's see what he did in the past. From 1916 uh, to 1918, he lived in Japan. First of all, he uh, he say in the he he say he is an lecturer of Waseda University, but actually he's not officially belongs to the faculty. And then he also say he taught in the Tokyo Imperial University. But actually, he he he, he said that he he uh, he called there, but I cannot find any records. However, and then and he also worked as an agent for British Royal Navy. He's a spy, and then uh, he has some connection with Japanese right wing politician intellectuals like um, Ogawa Shumei or Toyama Mizuru. I will introduce him later. And then when he uh, moved to China from 1918 to 1929, he taught in uh, university as a Sanskrit, scho uh, Sanskrit scholar. And the university is the name is Changsun Minji University. This university is a very small university, but this small uh, this university is just in front of the Basin School Shanghai, and this school was established by the rich. Uh, Jewish man, his name is Hassan. I think if Boas, Professor Boas here, he will know the name. And then, um, Shastri established some theosophical lodges in Shanghai. And then he also held a study group of Raja Yoga, the name is Holy Yoga. And his connection, of course, with um, Dr. Wu Tingfang. But however, he was also close, he claimed that he was close with Dr. Sonia Sen the founder of the uh, Republic of China. And so here's the picture that was taken, taken in 1917. And so you can see, can you see the picture clearly? I don't know, I'm not sure. This one is uh, Shastri. They, they had a Raja Yoga uh, Indian philosophy gathering. So they took a picture in the present of was it the university's residence? That's the president. Uh, his name is 
she can not go Okuma, he's also close with those right wing politicians. And this is his residence. He took, they took picture in 1917 with shot three. Not the picture. So how, how they did, how, how kind of lectures he gave at the Washington University. Actually, he was not, just like what I'm saying, he's not officially belongs to the faculty, but um, he's, a, he's a lecturer of the Washington Gita Society. And so the society was established in, de in December of the 1916. And then he was introduced as a missionary of Bharata Dharma Mahasala. And then um, he, this, this is a study for studying the theology in the Bhagavad Gita. And then uh, he gave some lectures uh, regularly. And in their first meeting, he gave lectures about the Sri Krishna and Gita and its place in Indian philosophy. So basically, he worked as some, a scholar about yoga and Indian uh, philosophy when he was in Waseda University. But meanwhile, let's see this document. We can find that he is also a slide of <coughs> nation for British Royal Navy. And this is the document, the only document mentioned about the name of the Agent P. They call him as Agent P. And this is the only document mentioned about his name as G. Shastri and in the National Archive of the United Kingdom. And then, um, what he, he gave a report to the British government regularly, and in one of the reports, he mentioned about uh, his attitude to, well, the imperialism in uh, British or Japanese to the Asian countries. And I'll just read the underline. He said that, I reply the immediate necessity of social reform in India and prove that India could never, without the help of England, hope to attain this end. Uh, and I have concluded by saying that Japan's mission was to ameliorate the condition of the whole of Asia. So basically, um, he's thinking, he think, he thinks that um, the British or Japanese government, they should, it's not appropriate for them to try to well, uh, do something to Japan or let's do something to China or to India. He thought it will be faster to help those countries' modernization. That's what he's thinking about. And so he was also a member of Indo-Japanese Association. This, this association uh, in the beginning, nowadays it's not in this way, but in the beginning it was about the sponsor, the president is the president of the Waseda University, the Shigenobu Okuma. And this should be the first beginning stage about Japanese pan Asianism. And so um, in this article, in this journal, Shastri talked about Asia before a community of nations. He said that I see Nippon means Japan, I see Nippon passing to use, and the sun as the Mandarin. Hand in hand with China and India, she brings real life and power to all her sisters in Asia. And he said that on uh, the last part, he said that let's all cooperate with her, for hers in, is a cause of justice and liberty. And you can see, uh, you can see that in this article or in his report, basically he supports British uh, or Japanese government imperialism. And then, And when and after in the from the 19, 1918 he moved to Shanghai. So what interesting is the reason why he talked about he want to move to Shanghai. He said that um, he said that in in this article which was published by the society he established in London. Um, he said that it was in the bookshop of Maruzen, Tokyo, and that I made the acquaintances of the great Chinese, Dr. Song Ye Sen. He invited me to his residence and took a friendly interest in me as a scholar. 
I fell in love with him on account of his charm of personality. He treated me with a great regard. I told him of my difficulties with the Indian Pashas and the Jingoistic Japanese. And he understood and asked me to come to China and offer to help me. And I, so I landed in China on the 20th of April, 1918. And so he said that why he, that we, why he moved to China, that's because the invitation of Dr. Sonia Sen, and he said he called Dr. Sonia Sen as his only friend in China. And that's so why he moved to China. And meanwhile, but we see this uh, article he wrote where after Dr. Sonia Sen's death, he mentioned about their first meeting after he arrived in, in uh, Shanghai. He, in the first beginning, uh, Dr. Sonia Sen asked him about the health of Mr. Mitsuru Toyama. So we can see their connection. They are not just friends, the ordinary friendship. The, Mr. Mitsuru Toyama, he is the leader, one of the leader of Japanese Pan-Asianism group, Black Dragon Society. And so that's why, because it's quite impossible for someone, ordinary people, to meet a person Sen in a bookshop. And the bookshop, Mamuzen, is a special place. It's not just a bookshop. It actually has some secret meetings, or if you want to introduce some politicians, you can go to that place. So it must have some uh, special connection between, or network between them. And we can also see this, because they have a connection with the Black Dragon Society, the Japanese uh, right-wing um, parties. And so um, here also in 1918, when after uh, Shastri arrived in Shanghai, he soon became the editor, one of the editors of the Miller Review, one of the most important English newspaper in Shanghai from 1970 to 19, the early of 1920s. And then he contributes some uh, articles there, and this is the article named uh, titled The Future of Democracy in Japan. And he said that why should Japan alone be blamed for being imperialistic? And I'm always alive to the virtue of the Japanese, <coughs> many of which are quite rare in, the, in other countries. And this article, why I introduce this article? Because you can see this is um, the official organ for the Black Dragon Society. Uh, the name is Asia Jilong. It, it has an English name as the Asian Revenue. This journal introduced Shastri's this article sooner after it was published in December 1918. This sooner this one introduced this article in 19 in I think it's January 1919. And so how they introduced the article and how they introduced uh, Shastri, they call him uh, Shastri is an Indian and who, who came to Japan, Tokyo, from 1916, and he left to Shanghai last year. And then they say that he is, although Shastri is a foreigner, he has he had a good re realization to Japanese government, and so that's why we want to introduce his article here. That's an introduction about his um, articles here. They they introduce his articles and they translated and so you can see so where is the connection between the CSS movement here actually is going to start some part you can see that uh, the black dragon society they have a Japanese official organ and also an English one the English one is here also called the Asian Review and the uh, Asian Review's uh, literary correspondent is uh, CSS's James Cousins and so it was published by the Black German Society. You can see on the right hand, the blue red one. And so, uh, of course, Shastri also contributes his articles here. He talks about that we believe, we believe in universal brotherhood, the self in all per se, and no in limitations can condition the sublime self. That's why he talks, and he, he found it some that. Um, uh, articles in this Asian Rabbit both in uh, the English one and Japanese one. 
So the seal connection uh, with the Pan-Asianism group in Japan, and also uh, it's that's why they play together with uh, James Cousin. So here, finally, we come to his theosophical movement. It's about he as the president of the Southern Lodge. Um, actually, this lodge, first of all, it started as a study circle from the 1970. Uh, finally, when they it was chartered as a lodge, they they had to uh, take uh, Shantri as their president. This is article the one of the founder of the uh, of the lodge. He said that they desire Professor Shastri to be its president. After that, up to that time, Professor Shastri had taken no part in the activities of the circle. And so that uh, basically in the records of the studies of the circle of theosophical society uh, in Shanghai before the law was chartered, we didn't find anything that just really participate in their meetings. But however, he came to be their president. He came to be their first president. And then, so he's, here's a picture of uh, the Southern Lord. This picture was taken in uh, Dr. Wu Hingfang's residence, that's in his garden. And so the president is Shastri, he's in the center. This one is Shastri, and this one is Dr. Wu Hingfang. And so the president is Shastri, and the other president is Dr. Wu Hingfang, because Wu Hingfang, in this time, he helped Dr. Song Yen Sen, so he is not live in Shanghai. He moved to uh, Guangzhou to help Dr. Song Yen Sen. And then here are the committees list. And so there were some uh, Western philosophers, and also they have jurist, the official office editor, his name is Alexander Hahn. He's a jurist American, and he helped a lot in the theosophical movement in Shanghai. I, I think I, I will not have time to talk about him, but I would like to talk about he and another theosophist how what they did about uh, education or publication in theosophical education publication in China. And then let's see about uh, in their official in the second law monthly. Um just we also contribute some articles here. And what in the nineteen twenty he is the first issue, he said that he talked about the the Hong Salami. He also published a book about Hong Salami. Uh, after he moved to London in, from after 1929. And he's, uh, this is the article he introduced here. And then, what, what about his activities when he moved to China uh, in around 1923 to 1925? We can see in a report in on 26 June 1923, um, they say that regarding theosophical work, the work all along has been rather an uphill effort on account of much reactionary spirit from one source. One the other day we held our nominations. June first, the president, Professor Shastri, announced his re resignation from the presidency, which was accepted with, without regret. So he tried he, he announced he wants to resign. And uh, he also wanted to resign as a member in 1923. And however, you can see soon, soon after that, in the 1925, his his death. Uh, this is this law. They want to establish a new lodge for only Chinese native. The lodge name is China Lodge. And then I'll read the London line. It says that this lodge owes its existence to the devoted view of Dr. Wang An Yi and Professor H. P. Shastri, who have ungrudgingly giving of their time and service to the promotion of its welfare. And the another of the line says that we are glad to welcome back Professor Shastri and thus to close. And so we can see that um, in the 1925 he's back. And so 
This is the China, uh, the China Lodge, the list of the members and the fox priests. And so we can see that in 1924, they have a down lodge for Chinese natives. This uh, lodge was established by this, the president, Theosophical, the president of Chinese Theosophical Lodge. Her name is Dorothy Arnor. I think I can show you. This will be more clear. Uh, from 1960, um, Dr. Wu Tingfang and Matt Hurst, uh, well, he's a British man, and then he moved to Australia from 1920. And from the 1960, they started to promote the theosophical thinking in Shanghai. And then uh, in 1970, Matt Hurst, he established the Press Society in Shanghai. And from the 1980, Matt Hurst and George Carter some other people, they, try, they, they had a study circle for theosophy, and they also gave lectures in the press society in Shanghai. And soon after that, in, from the 1919, they tried to uh, establish a lodge, and the lodge was chartered in the January of 1920. That's the Zappen Lodge. And uh, the, its president is Xiaotri, and the honorary president is Dr. Wu Tingfang. And so in the 1922, uh, because uh, after uh, Dr. Wu Tingfang's death, the sales of basically the sales of people movement stopped. And so they tried to rebuild uh, the society again. And so in the 1922, uh, other Chinese sales of this, they had a sun lodge. And then 23, Dr. <coughs> uh, 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 Dorothy Arnold, she moved to Shanghai and she established a new lodge called Shanghai Lodge and she's the president. And she wants and she asked Shastri to for help and so Shastri, but however Shastri he resigned as a member, as a the president. And that's so far how they did. And in 1924, the Don Lodge for Native Chinese, and 1925, the China Lodge, a native, another a native Chinese lodge held by Dr. Shastri. And then, uh, let's go back to here. So we can see that their connection, no matter, uh, though that Shastri, he wants to resign in 1923, but however, he still had a connection with those sales of this in Shanghai. We can see their connection, and soon after his resignation, he come back as a uh, president of the China Lodge. And actually, um, we have some black records that seem that he, when he was in India, he belongs to the UP Federation. But however, uh, the only re official records we can find of his re um, as a member, the black record, is only this one as a member of the China Lodge in 1925. And so, Here's the floor, the basic floor of uh, Chinese theosophical movement in Shanghai. They have more movement in other places like a Tianjin or a very big one in Hong Kong, but today I only introduced the one in Shanghai. And then, so what uh, Shastri did when he quit as a president? Actually, he established a, another society called Shanghai Pan Asian Society. And this society, uh, the president, the writer is Dr. Uh, Donggun Hiroshi. He is a famous doctor in Shanghai, a Japanese. And then the English editor is uh, Shastri. This uh, magazine called Daya Zhi, but the name, the English name is the Agency Review, same as the one like uh, published by Dragon, Black Dragon Society. This uh, magazine also have both English version and Chinese version. You stand like uh, this totally the same as the Black Dragon Society's journal. And so he established this group for the Pan Asianism in Shanghai. And then you can see that he talked about the uh, uh, Dr. Song Yat Sen and uh, in his this journal to say that Dr. Song Yat Sen reached Shanghai on the 17th November and is saying his house in the French concession. And Professor Shastri offered him 
greetings um, in case of the agentic association. It is hoped that Dr. Sun, who has been ever helping the agentic cause, will devote more of his attention to the um, association of Asia. So he's trying to have more connection with Dr. Sun, as you can see, also see from this article. Actually, he visits uh, Dr. Sun residence very frequently uh, after, after he moved to Shanghai. And then, you can see, though he quit as a president, he still talks about Andy Basin in his uh, Pan-Asianism uh, uh, journals. He talks about Basin, and he says that we hope the reader of this review will study the spiritual writings of this great woman, and uh, will perhaps bring about a thorough understanding between East and West. So you, you can see that he, though he quit as a member, he, however, in his uh, journal of about the pan asianism movement, he's still talking about Basin and the uh, Universal Brotherhood. And so I want to summarize the floor. Uh, from the 1915, when I mentioned this famous one, India, a nation, a plea for self-government. And soon after that, uh, Dr. Uh, Jim Cotton, he moved to India for help with Basin. And then, um, just soon after that, 1916, Shatri moved left India and he moved to Shop, to Tokyo. Uh, however, he also, meanwhile, worked as the, the agent P uh, for the British government. And then, uh, from 19, uh, that he worked as a uh, university lecturer and agent P both till 1918. And soon, so after that, when Dr. Song Yasen invited him to visit China, he moved to China in 1918. And this is also uh, the time that um, they have Wu Fang and other theosophists who live in China start their study circle for theosophy. And so in 19, 1919, uh, Jim Cousins, that he moved to Tokyo. It's soon after uh, Shastri left, uh, Shastri left uh, Tokyo. And so in 1920s, they have their first Chinese lodge, second lodge in Shanghai. And in this time, James Cousins, he came to be the literary correspondent of the uh, Asian reviews of that uh, pan asianism group, Black Dragon Society. And from, so the, then in 1924, you can see that when uh, Dorothy Arnold, she established a down lodge for Chinese people, and Shastri also helped him in, the, in this establishment. And meanwhile, Shastri, um, he wanted to quit as a member, and but he established a Shanghai pan Asian Society. And in the same time, uh, Dr. Sanya Sen, he gets his famous lecture called uh, um, Great Asianism in Kobe, in Tokyo. And then Shatri back and helped do, do as a leader of the Shanghai Chinese Lodge called uh, China Lodge. And so this we can see in this floor that I would not say that he's moving. However, you can, I would like to suggest that his movement is quite similar as what uh, James Cousins do in Tokyo. Because uh, after he left Shanghai in 1929, and soon after he left, uh, Dr. Uh, James Cousins visited Shanghai after that. So their movement is very, uh, both of them, James Cousins and Shatri, uh, they were very close to Japanese Canadianism group, and they helped them for, they, they gave lectures, and they have journals in those with those groups. But however, meanwhile, they also have their own theosophical movement in the local society. Jim Cousins is the founder of the first Japanese lodge, International Lodge, and uh, Shatri is for the second lodge, the first lodge in China. Yeah. And so I would like to make a brief conclusion. Maybe it's not a conclusion. I want to say that if we see in Dr. Wu Pong's case, the Theosophical movement might be a one where he wants to introduce Theosophy as some uh, social reform or traditional Renaissance movement. 
And in the other hand, uh, in the case of Shantri, he wants to view this movement as an internationalism movement for Asian unity. Uh, this might may not be a, a conclusion, but this uh, will a uh, conclusion for what I want to discuss today. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.